الحمد لله على نعماء وعلى آلاء وعلى سخاء الحمد لله في السراء والضراء وحين البأس الحمد لله في المنشط والمكرة الحمد لله كما هو أهل له لا نحصي فناء عليه هو تباركت أسماؤه وتجلت قدرته وتعاظمت ذاته الحميد الذي يرجع إليه الأمر كله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده لا شبيه له وحده لا مثيل له وحده لا وليد له سبحانه وتعالى عما يقولون علوا كبيرا فسبحان الله حين تمسون وحين تصبحون وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وقرة عيوننا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيعنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله ما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا وما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم والله يعصمك من الناس يفع الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا مضل له ومن يعصي الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا هادي له ومن يتوكل على الله فإن الله على كل شيء قدير ومن يتوكل على الله يهدي قلبه ومن يتوكل على الله الله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون أما بعد معشر المؤمنين يقول الله وقوله الحق 
وكلماته الصدق لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون This ayah can be adapted into the following meaning. You will not find a people who are committed to Allah and to the final day. who will be politically friendly to those who are opposed to Allah and to his apostles. Even if they, if these who are opposed happen to be their fathers or their sons, or their brothers, or their folks, their bloodline folks. For Allah has embedded them, has embedded their hearts with this divine commitment. لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه and he supports them with a motivation from him ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها and he will cause them to enter into heavens underneath which rivers flow. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه For Allah is pleased with them. Allah is satisfied with them. And they are satisfied with him. أولئك حزب الله They are the partisans of Allah ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون Indeed, certainly Allah's party are to succeed Some of the information we have concerning this area pertains 
to individuals who had committed themselves to Allah and the final day during the lifetime of our blessed and beloved Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, in which one of the individuals who was affiliated with a prophet had a father who was a hypocrite and an enemy of the prophet. And this refers to Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud. This character, the father, was known for his dual allegiance. Overtly being faithful to the Prophet, but covertly being faithful and honest to the camps and to the enemies of the Prophet and Islam. On one occasion, the Prophet was having, as it were, a glass of water. And then this son of the Munafiq, who was a devout Muslim, asked the Prophet if he could take whatever was left in that glass of water to his father. which he did. And his father asked him, remember his father was a person of dual loyalty. He asked him, from where did you bring us this water? He said, from Allah's Prophet. And this munafiq turns to his son and he says, you would have been better off bringing me your mother's urine to drink then bring me this glass of leftover water from the Prophet. And what do you think the feelings of this son would be towards his own father? They were very negative, to say the least. They were negative enough to have him go to the Prophet of Allah and disclose this affair to him and ask him permission to take action against his own father. And short of any physical act of hostility by the father to his son, the prophet advised the son to cease and to show the father courtesy in this life as a son to father relationship that should never befog or disturb our ideas as to the political character of any person in the world even if that person is a father or a son or a brother or another blood relationship to any of us because our relationship to Allah takes precedence against any blood or ethnic or cultural or sectarian or linguistic priorities as they are called. There's one priority that we know and that is our allegiance to Allah and to His Prophet. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله and this was demonstrated this ayah is not a theoretical ayah these words are not food 
for the imagination. These are policies and principles and practical decisions that feature our character as committed Muslims who are committed to Allah and to His Messenger. لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله. You will never find people who are truly and principally committed to Allah and to His Prophet who at the same time are in amicable political relationships with those who are opposed to Allah and those who are opposed to the Prophet. This was demonstrated in the first generation of Muslims when sons at the war front would fight their own bloodline. They would fight their fathers and their uncles. They would fight their brothers and their cousins. Uhud and Badr and the other military encounters of this generation of committed Muslims was one that brought together people who were close ethnically, who were close in their family ties, who were close in their bloodline, who were close in their linguistic makeup, who were close in their national identity. But when it came to the affiliation with Allah and the Prophet, none of that would deter a Muslim from shedding his own blood. There were real individuals who did this. And because of this devotion to Allah and His Prophet, the sword of Imam Ali, may Allah's greetings and blessings be upon him, was dripping with these meanings. لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله. This area here does not permit any negotiations or any half solutions. If there is an opponent and an enemy of Allah and His Prophet. Then he incurs our immediate or our delayed encounter on the battlefield. لا تجد قوم يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله. And these ayat are not. Confined to a historical context. These ayat are true today as they were ever true in those days. We still have people and individuals and affiliations that don't compromise their relationship with Allah and His Apostle. And we still have those parties and those organizations and those governments and establishments and authorities who are dead set against Allah and His Messenger. The dynamics are still alive. Their human blood and flesh representation are still around. And the polarity is still as it ever has been. Who are today's groups and governments that are opposed to Allah? يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Who are they? They may be individuals. 
Salman Rushdie is an individual who has said foul things about Allah and about the Prophet. You think those who are committed uncompromisingly to Allah and the Prophet are going to set aside their relationship with Allah and have him walk the earth freely as the Kafirs desire him to do. There are individuals who are still in everything they represent opposed to Allah and his messenger. And from individuals to government. The Israeli Zionist Jewish government stands at the helm of authoritarian and establishmentarian opposition to Allah and to his messenger. And in between the individual, the malice of these individuals and the conspiracies and animosities and military actions of governments and states with the shedding, with the active shedding of Muslim blood even as we speak and with all the international legitimacy that they hide behind there still are people of Allah who are committed to him who are not compromising and who are not camouflaging this fact of life the Muslim, the committed Muslim in today's world has to concentrate his and her mind on the political characters of individuals and states who have in many words and in many actions declared an undeclared war against those Muslims who are discovering the meanings of life in Allah, in his book, and in his prophet. In the past ten days, seven Israeli Zionist Jewish troops Soldiers, combatants, were killed and dispatched to Jahannam in southern Lebanon. Allah this, Allah 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 this has caused the Prime Minister, the historical enemy of an entity that represents animosity to Allah historically and contemporarily the Prime Minister of Israel this illegality of war against the Prophet and against Islam had to cut off today his visit to Europe and come back to the land that he stole from us international thieves and try now to think about how to confront Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Not that they haven't been thinking about this before, 
But so far, all of their thoughts have proved a failure because dissatisfaction is growing in their ranks. They said a year and a half ago, 16% of the Israeli public wanted unconditional withdrawal of the Zionist occupying, usurping troops from southern Lebanon. A year and a half ago, it was 16%. Today, they say, these are their numbers, it is 40% of the Israeli Zionist Jews who want an unconditional withdrawal of their sons and their brothers from southern Lebanon because of the disasters that they are experiencing at the hands, not of organized militaries and armies in the area. You have them in Egypt, you have them in Jordan, in Syria and Lebanon, organized armies, military forces, air force, navy, ground forces, armies. What have they done? As far as the Israeli policy and decision makers are concerned, these armed forces around them are contained. The only element that remains a threat to them is this element that has, has placed its confidence and re its reliance in Allah and Allah alone. What is it that these people, these individuals in southern Lebanon have? They don't have F-16s and F-15s. They don't have nuclear capabilities and weapons of mass destruction. They don't have biological and chemical warfare. They don't have world-class military technology and every gadget that's a frontline item in this military arsenal of the Kafirs. They have none of that. But they have one thing that is frightening the Israelis on an escalating scale. And that is their determination not to play politics, not to enter into any diplomatic negotiations with overt or covert enemies. Their single-minded decision is to rely upon Allah and to prosecute this war of confrontation with the Zionist Israeli Jewish enemy that occupies their homes and their lands and their territories in southern Lebanon until the bitter end, come what may. And what is coming are Bashair. What is coming is good news if Muslims have the ability to see what is coming. A few months ago, a newspaper in Jordan called al Majd wrote an article about Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. And in this article, it was stated that the success of Hezbollah in South Lebanon is precisely because they have not been fooled by the Western media. They have not disarmed mentally or psychologically. They are prepared to engage the military war and killing machine of the Zionists on their own turf. And the editor of that newspaper was called to account by the government. And then he was referred to the court for writing an article like that. This is not only a military war against those who have established themselves as the Hizib of Allah, this is a model for the rest of the Muslims. The enemy is vulnerable. 
even if he is hiding behind the military technology that he has, they have 200, 300, on some counts more than 400 nuclear devices, the Israeli Zionist Jews. What is that doing then? And now they turn around and they want to threaten a larger area, saying these Hezbollahis in southern Lebanon are not able to do what they are doing if it wasn't for Iran, or if it wasn't for Syria, or if it wasn't for Hamas, or if it wasn't for a larger support system of Muslims in the world. Now, they, after they try to instigate a war on the Turkish-Syrian borders, and they fail. After they try to instigate a war on the Iranian-Afghani borders, and they fail. Now, they themselves are going to have to bloody their own lives and their own souls and bodies, more or less, in another military affair against us, which they are beginning to think about now in a more serious fashion. Why? Let us not be fooled for one moment. It is not because the official dumbs in the Arab countries around occupied Palestine, it is not because they are any threat. No. To the contrary, they are the political, the establishment in the Arab countries are political allies and political friends of the Zionist usurpers and occupiers of the land of Al-Isra and the Mi'raj, of Al-Quds and the area around which is blessed. A fact that the mediocre Muslim does not realize why? Because his thinking has receded from the horizons of these ayat. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين. Has anyone paid close attention to a characterization of this ayah? Some individuals ask for a tafsir of these ayahs. You want a tafsir of this ayah? لا تتخذ اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم. Don't become political allies of Zionism and imperialism, of the political expression of the Jews and the political expression of the Christians, because they are allies one of the other. How true this ayah is, and how abundant the tafsir of this ayah is in real life around us. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ And whomever from among you takes a position of political alliance with them, Zionism and imperialism has become one of them by the ayah in the Qur'an, by the expression of this ayah. فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Indeed, he has become one of them. You want a tafsir of this ayah? Review the clips, the video clips of King Hussein and Yasser Arafat when they have entered into a political alliance with the historical and contemporary and future enemy of Allah and his prophet and the committed Muslim. That is the tafsir of this ayah. Now they are salaries, employees of the kafir interest in the land that Allah has blessed. Arafat and the traders with him 
now are involved in a larger policy of having the Central Intelligence Agency in on a direct encounter with the sons of the Islamic movement in Palestine and around Palestine. Don't think that there are not other rulers in the area who have acquiesced to this. And in the end, the determinant shall be how much we rely upon Allah. The Prophet of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, said, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلَتَأْخُذُنَّ عَلَى يَدِ الظَّالِمِ وَلَتَأْثُرُنَّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ أَطْرًا أَوْ لَيُوشِكَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُعِمَّكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِّنْ عِنْدِهِ ثُمَّ تَدْعُونَهُ فَلَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَكُمْ you will indeed, the Prophet of Allah says, and he is addressing you, and he is addressing us. You will indeed authorize, empower al-ma'roof. And you will indeed be legitimized and dethrone this munkar. This is not enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, as is the mainstream translation of this hadith. These words are so general that they have become ambiguous in joining the good and forbidding the evil. There is more to it. Al-Amr bil Ma'roof has a degree of authority in it. There is no Amr without authority. And there is no Nahi without authority. لَتَأْمُرُنَّ bil Ma'roof وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ these words are coached in emphatic terms. The lamb and the wa and the noon at the beginning of each word and at the end of each word. Lata'murunna and latanhawunna. Wala ta'khudunna ala yadi zalim. And you will check the excesses of the deeds of any oppressor. That's our function. This is the area our mind should be concentrated on, <coughs> especially in these days and times. وَلَا تَأْفُرُنَّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ أَفَرَى And you will confine him, this ruler, who has gone astray with policies of oppression, with tyrannical decisions, you will confine and restrict and inhibit him to al-haq in a framework and in a reference of al-haq. أو or else لا يشكن الله الله أن يعمكم بعذاب من عنده or it will be that Allah is posed to engulf you with a punishment that is due and then you will come to Allah in this state of affairs. And plead with him. You will ask him. You will beseech and beg him, O oh Allah. And he will not respond. Because you have not responded to him. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعوه سبحانه 
وأنتم على يقين بالإجابة وتوبوا إلى الله واستنصروه فما النصر إلا من عند الله إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم واستغفروه إنه كان أخطار الحمد لله بجميع المحامد على جميع النعم وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحصوها وصلى الله وسلم على المبعوث خيرا ورحمة وهدى لكافة الأمم محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Brothers and sisters of the divine course of Asirat al-Mustaqim Throughout all of these years of Islamic enrichment the Muslims have come a long distance but there is still much more distance to go throughout all of these years the main challenge has been in the internal Islamic arena the main challenge has been to open the horizons of the Muslims to meanings of the Quran that have long been dormant meanings that have almost disappeared from our active lives and from our active thoughts. It becomes almost impossible to have an average Muslim relate vital information around to the guidelines of Allah and the instructions of the Prophet. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم There is a world that is in need of the information that we claim to have There is a world in which the numbers speak for themselves Between 1980 and 1990, 60% of the American wealth was possessed and made by 1% of the American population. There are three individuals, the three wealthiest people in the world have more income than 48 nations in the developing countries of the world. The facts of life are staring. Muslims and non-Muslims that have to be solved, but problems that cannot be solved while the Muslim mind is incarcerated, imprisoned in ritual and in forms of worship that does not extend. to the real issues of the world around that are addressed squarely and directly by the Qur'an and by the Prophet. Why? The answer is in your mind and in your heart. If you are not able to develop a working relationship between the meanings of the Qur'an and the statements of the Prophet.
increasing problems in the real world around. On the other hand, then Allah will move in with people who will, in His own judgment and within His own calculations, who will satisfy His program for life. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبِدِ الْقَوْمَ غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ there is a vacuum that is growing and the facts of life are merciless. They show no mercy. A person dies of hunger. Millions of people die of hunger. A person is displaced. Millions upon millions of people in this world are displaced. Agony is decreasing. Poverty is on the rise. Problems that are becoming unmanageable because of the absence of the program that we are given. And that makes of those who are on the front line, those who are shedding their blood in the Islamic world against internal and external elements, that makes them even more champions of the new tomorrow that we all look forward to. وَيَوْمَئِذٍ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ بِنَصْرِ اللَّهِ يَنْصُرُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا عليك وحدك توكلنا وإليك وحدك أنبنا وإليك وحدك المصير اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نشرك بك شيئا نعلمه ونستغفرك لما لا نعلمه اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين ومن قهر الرجال ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تؤمن خذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا صل على محمد و آل محمد ربنا بارك على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وباركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة محمد وعلى